first let us finish off hepatitis a virus hepatitis a virus we know the most important route of transmission is the fecal oral route but there are some descriptions about sexual route of transmission especially in men who have sex with men especially anal sex rare case reports of blood transfer related hepatitis a virus also has been proven and if they ask you about the genotype it's not at all important but theoretically speaking the most common genotype that you see in indian subcontinent is genotype 1 and incubation period is going to be extremely short approximately 2 weeks is the average incubation period for hepatitis a virus infections remember hepatitis a virus is the most common cause of viral hepatitis in children in india and at the same time it is the most common cause of acute liver failure in children in india hepatitis a virus these are some of the facts we know most of the things already but there are some forms of hiv infection there are three different types of hiv infection are there from clinical perspective that's what i'm going to discuss very important the first one is the classic hiv infection how they're going to come they're going to come with the spike in the alt and then they resolve very classic so this spike in the alt can be associated with jaundice or may not be associated with jaundice if it is subclinical in an ectric infection there will be no jaundice if it's an ectric infection it there will be a jaundice but subclinical is more common we know that and just there will be a spike in alt and it will resolve once you get the productive antibodies so what are the antibody you're going to get the first antibody you're going to generate is anti hiv igm antibody that's going to typically persist for a period of three to six months not more than that and after that you will develop igg antibodies but we don't have any separate assays that measure ig antibodies rather you can measure something called as anti hiv total you can assume that in the first three to six months it will be more of igm and after three to six months it will be more of igg but anti hiv total is going to uh, you know, like detect both IgM and IgG, it's a sum of IgM as well as IgG. So this is a classic infection, right? And usually the spike in the ALT is the one that is going to correlate with the symptoms of the patient. Not just ictus, even the prodromal symptoms will be correlating with the spike in the ALT. And most of the times, once the infection resolves, the excretion of HAV in the stools also will resolve over a period of time. And the patient will be resolved of infection because anti-HIV is ideally a productive antibody that clears of the infection in most situations. But there can be some patients where you might see a kind of a infection called relapsing HIV infection. So let us assume occasional patient might have this kind of infection. So what I'm seeing here is multiple spikes of ALT. So ALT elevation will happen with multiple intervals plus at the same time the IgM will persist for a longer period of time. Persistence of IgM for more than six months will happen and this is typical of a relapsing HIV. Especially in immunosuppressed individuals this is possible where there will be multiple viremias that will result in multiple immune attacks on the liver and there will result in multiple spikes of ALT because of multiple acute elevations of hepatitis A virus in the blood, you can result in uh, multiple elevations of IgM as well. So IgM will persist for a period of more than three to six months. That is an indication of relapsing HIV. So why it is not chronic HIV? Because invariably, almost every single patient will recover, 100% recovery. There is no chronicity. Please understand, there is no chronicity here. Invariably, every single individual will recover. This is relapsing HIV. It's rare, but can happen. Next, third one. Third form of presentation is called as cholestatic HIV. Cholestatic hepatitis A virus infection. Where there will be a predominantly cholestatic response. In the sense, these patients will have elevated ALT, all right, plus there will be a significant ALP elevation. Like usually it will be more than two times the upper limit of normal. This much will not be seen in a routine acute viral hepatitis, but in a cholestatic HIV, you can see a significant increase in ALP also. That tells you it's a cholestatic response and the bilirubin levels may be very, very high and can reach levels more than 20 milligrams per deciliter. 
but this is not going to equate to liver failure unless and until you have signs of liver failure. So bilirubin elevation alone is not liver failure. Please understand. Why you have such a high level of bilirubin? Most of them will be direct bilirubin. That is because of formation of delta fraction, and it takes very long time for eliminating this delta fraction. The elimination half life of delta uh, fraction of bilirubin correlates with the half life of albumin. We know that why. So this is typical cholestatic HIV, and the patient will be jaundiced for quite a long time. It may take a long time for the bilirubin to come back to normal. Predominant cholestatic response. Three forms of hepatitis A virus infection. One is classic HIV, commonest. Second is relapsing form of HIV, common in immunosuppressed individuals. And third is cholestatic HIV. Plus, please understand there is no chronic infection. And how will you diagnose? As I told you. anti hiv igm is the way to go because this is the one that indicates acute infection remember persistence beyond 6 months indicate relapsing hiv but typically speaking for all acute infections anti hiv igm is the key antibody that we need to find for and next is going to be the anti hiv total this is not that important because anti hiv total can indicate either an acute infection or it could be a resolved infection but overall anti hiv total is a marker of exposure so where you are going to use anti hiv total only in patients uh, who are supposed to have had hepatitis a virus infection in the past or probably when you are studying zero prevalence of hepatitis a virus in the community during that time anti hiv total can be performed so because if you are exposed to the virus you are going to have some form of anti hiv antibody and that's what is detected by anti hiv total so most important role of anti hiv total is to understand the zero prevalence in the community how many people have had infection in the past and remember the zero prevalence of hepatitis a virus is directly proportional to the age there is a study which says the older you grow there is more chance of having had a hepatitis a virus infection which means people aged more than 60 years 60% of them will test positive for anti hiv total antibody which means they have had some form of hiv exposure in the past next what is the period of infectivity this is very important how much time they are going to shed the virus in the stools or having virus in the blood so typically you can take the symptom onset as the median before the onset of symptoms Two weeks, and after the onset of symptoms, one week they are going to shed the virus, and this is the period of infectivity. As far as hepatitis A virus is concerned, very important question. And next, what about the treatment? Treatment is completely supportive, even if the patient develops ALF. The treatment is supportive only. There is no specific antiviral drug that is dedicated for treatment of hepatitis A virus. And whether you have prophylaxis or not. you do have prophylaxis you have pre exposure prophylaxis as well as post exposure prophylaxis for hepatitis a virus what are the pre exposure prophylaxis so pre exposure prophylaxis will be done in the form of vaccination this vaccine is basically a inactivated vaccine and you need to know the schedule of the vaccine is going to comprise of two doses given 6 to 18 months apart after the first dose the second dose will be given 6 to 18 months apart remember the dose should be halved half of the dose should be given if age is less than 19 adolescent or younger population should receive only half dose but the dosing schedule is two doses 6 to 18 months apart and as far as post exposure prophylaxis is concerned you can do it in the form of vaccine which is better and you have to give vaccine within 2 weeks of exposure or alternatively you can use hepatitis a virus immunoglobulin also which is available as we have discussed in the virology the dose of hepatitis a virus immunoglobulin is approximately 0.02 ml per kilogram intramuscular and even vaccine is intramuscular and it should be given asap as soon as possible clip who are going to get vaccination especially when you are going to endemic areas that are loaded with hepatitis a virus then there is a role for vaccination 
otherwise there is no much role for vaccination in the community in western countries hiv vaccine is ready level because when you are traveling to other countries like india or africa where hiv is endemic then probably you know like you can take a uh, vaccine shot before traveling to these countries but one of the best forms of post exposure prophylaxis is also vaccine only and it has to be given within 2 weeks of exposure as i told you the infectivity period ranges from 2 weeks before the onset of symptom to 1 week after the onset of symptom but there are certain population like neonates and immunosuppressed individual who can actually shed the virus for months and the longest that's uh, proven in a study is approximately 40 to 15 months but overall they can uh, excrete the virus in the stools for a longer period of time especially the neonates who are exposed to the virus all right so these are some of the important points with regards to hepatitis a virus infection subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder